بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے ود دا نیو ٹاپک اینڈ موسٹ پرابلی دا لاسٹ اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ دی زیڈ ٹرانسفارم سو آئی ٹولڈ یو اٹ واز ناٹ انکلوڈیڈ ان آر کورس کانٹینٹس بٹ اٹ واز ان سم بڈیز ان مینی پیپلس کورس کانٹینٹ سو دے آر فار لیٹ اس ڈو اٹ زیڈ ٹرانسفارم Our course has already finished in the previous video. I, I took a very long break. I'm recording a video after a very, very long time. Very, very long time. More than a month, you know. So, let us first uh, uh, some, some, so do some revision, you know. Why to study Z-transform? What is Z-transform? Although, you know, this Z-transform is what? This is the generalization of the discrete time Fourier transform which means this is the discrete time counterpart of the Laplace transform the Laplace transform was the generalization of what of the continuous time Fourier transform and what do I mean by generalization so it means to increase the domain of it to increase the scope of it and and you know how you know how so as we studied the continuous time Fourier transform it was for absolutely integrable signals it was for absolutely integrable signals let's see if i write it so why are these markers not maybe this board is a little wet anyways so we saw the continuous time fourier transform this was for absolutely integrable signals right and what was the uh, the the relation the relation was this x of j omega is negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative j omega t integration with respect to t right so the condition that absolutely integrable this was that x of t the absolute of it the integration of it with respect to t this should be less than infinity this was the the what the the the, the, the condition right This was for the continuous time Fourier transform and we know very well that continuous time Fourier transform was evaluated on the G omega axis evaluated on the J omega axis then we had a problem some signals you know that that we could not find their Uh, continuous time full transform we needed those but we could not find it why because it was not fulfilling this condition that was not absolutely integrable so so to deal with that sort of signals we did what we did some amendments in the continuous time Fourier transform and that amendments led us to the Laplace transform and what did we do in the Laplace transform in the Laplace transform we added a real part also this was only the imaginary part in the exponential term so what do we do in the Laplace transform we added a real part also which means now in place of x of j omega we have a full complex number this was a purely imaginary number now we have a complex number x of s which means x of sigma plus j omega and this is now equal to ne exponential of negative infinity uh, integration negative infinity to positive x of t exponential of negative st with respect to t and of course you could uh, b b b split it again as this negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t and you know very well now if i name this signal as x1 of t so which means that this whole x of s this whole laplace transform is the fourier transform of this x1 of t which means the fourier transform of one signal multiplied with a real exponential signal multiply with a real exponential signal now why do we multiply the real exponential signal the reason is that maybe now maybe we're not 100% sure for that but in most the cases maybe that now after multiplying the real exponential signal this signal x of t the overall product becomes absolutely integrable so if it becomes absolutely integrable now for this the Fourier transform exists the overall thing is known as the Laplace transform 
this was for the continuous time case isn't it fine so what do we do this was evaluated the continuous time photo form was evaluated on the geomega axis now if you have added a real part which means you have a geomega axis over here so you've added a real axis as well so now this is the laplace transform is evaluated in the complex frequency plane the laplace transform is evaluated on the s plane it has a real part it has an imaginary part is that clear till here it is similarly similarly we have for the discrete time case for the discrete time fourier transform so now we are basically coming to our basic our main topic so what do we have for the discrete time fourier transform we have discrete time signal so if we have a discrete time signal x of n the discrete time fourier transform would be what x of and we named it as x of exponential of j omega and this is equal to a summation n running from negative infinity to positive x of n exponential of negative j omega n isn't it like this it is it is right so again for the existence uh, of uh, the DTFT uh, which means for this thing to converge the signal x of n must be absolutely summable again the condition is what the condition is again for absolutely summable uh, that uh, that this thing n running from negative infinity to positive x of n absolute this must be less than infinity this must be absolutely summable but again again we may have we may have what some uh, you know if we have a signal that is not absolutely uh, summable so the dtft would not exist and some neither energy nor power signals have this problem and they are of practical importance they are of practical importance some neither energy nor power signals uh, for which are not absolutely summable so for them the DTFT would not exist so we have a problem what is the problem so we need to solve this problem again we do what we add something we modify this DTFT equation we do some amendments as we did in the continuous time case to get something new and that something new would be the Z transform right and this thing this dtft is evaluated on a unit circle this is evaluated on a unit circle where should i write over here let's say uh, 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 dtft is evaluated on a unit circle and what do i mean by the unit circle so unit circle is a circle of radius one right so this is your unit circle the discrete time Fourier transform is evaluated over here somewhere how do you come to this unit circle you come from the exponential of j omega exponential of j omega you know the complex number in terms of uh, in the polar form this is the polar form so you have the magnitude that is one and this exponential j omega the omega is the angle so one over here is the radius of the circle you know this from your trigonometry so this one is the radius of the circle and omega is changing continuously so i've drawn a circle this axis is the real axis this axis is the imaginary axis so to avoid the limitations of the discrete time Fourier transform we move into the today's topic and that is the z transform so z transform now what do we have let's say we have a signal x of n and the corresponding z transform is known as is, is like this x of z a small z z so double sided arrow means what you could go in either direction which means we would have an inverse z transform as well as we had an inverse laplace transform where this z is what this z represents a complex number in the polar form z represents a complex number in the polar form which means it is r exponential of j 
omega and r is the magnitude of it and omega is the angle of it right so we mean we added some magnitude part to the to the to the z transform now your x of z is what x of z which is x of r exponential of j omega this would be now what from this equation so you have an exponential of j omega over here so in place of this you put an r exponential of j omega so which means we have uh, an n running from negative infinity to positive x of n and let me write over here we have an r exponential of j omega whole to the power negative n whole to the power negative n if I could write it like this, if I, I can write it, you know, exponential of j omega to the power minus n, right? So, over here, in place of exponential of j omega, I have an r exponential of my uh, r exponential of j omega, right? Not a minus. So, whole to the power minus of n. So, what have we done? We basically have added a magnitude part. This r is doing what? Previously, we were considering a, a circle of radius 1. Why? Because the magnitude of exponential of j omega was 1. Over here, the, ex, the magnitude of the r exponential of j omega is r, which means it's not 1. So, the z transform is evaluated on a circle not of unit magnitude, but of a radius r. So, not of a radius r, we will discuss it, but we have added, till here it's clear, that we have added a magnitude part. We have added a magnitude part in the form of what? In the form of r. So, maybe we have changed the radius of the circle from unit circle, right? So, let's get further into things. So, if you write this as uh, uh, separately, wait, this is your equation, this is your equation for the z transform. You've already got, this is, you know z, this is z, so x of z, uh, for any corresponding signal x of n, would be what? The summation from n running from negative infinity to positive infinity, x of n, and z to the power negative n z to the power negative n and this is your z transform wasn't it easy wasn't it simple it was it is right yes is it clear till here it should be now uh, if i uh, if i you know write it separately from there this is our basic equation so if i write that x of z and this is equal to what? Uh, if I write it like this, summation n running from negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, r, uh, wait, x of n. And then I have r to the power minus n. And then I have exponential of negative j omega n. So can I write it? I can. And now what can I say? I can name this signal as another signal x1 of n. And can I not say that this is the Fourier, the discrete time Fourier transform of this signal x1 of n? I can say it. Yes? Yes. So that is it. That is it about it. That is it about it. Still, we calculate the transform on a circle, but the, this is not a unit circle. So, if I compile the things that we have seen till now, if I say the two points, the two important points from the discussion are what? So, they are that the Z transform of a signal, if I write it like this, if, if the Z transform of a signal X of N, is what this is the discrete time Fourier transform of the same signal x of n multiplied with r to the power negative n where r is the magnitude of the circle the r is the r is the radius of the circle and it is the magnitude of the complex uh, the, the complex number 
is that fine till here this is the first thing and similarly the second point is that the discrete time Fourier transform of a signal x of n the discrete time Fourier transform of x of n this is what this is the z transform of x of n evaluated when evaluated when r is equal to 1 have a look if you put the value of r equal to 1 over here 1 to the power anything is 1 you get the Fourier the z transform equal to the Fourier transform of the thing these are the two things that we have concluded from the discussion so far these are the two things that we have concluded from the discussion so far and I believe it is clear till here it should be okay anyhow this uh, uh, this is the discussion for now let's say we discuss some more points which are related of course but the topic the basic definition of the z transform is finished till here but let's say we talk about some difference the fundamental difference is it's not a difference but the points that we need to keep in mind so in Laplace transform we took what in Laplace transform we used to had s is sigma plus j omega which means that we had the rectangular form of a complex number right so now in the discrete time case we deal with a number z that is something r exponential of j omega which means this is the polar form of representation of the complex number right where r is what r is the radius of the circle or it is the distance from the origin right so if this is something r right this is the distance from the origin and omega would be varying so omega starts to vary from zero it's an angle right so starts to vary from zero and goes in the positive direction increases and anti-clockwise is the positive direction so it, 360 degrees right so this is your real part this is your imaginary part fine for the Laplace transform you had the complex s plane where this was the real part sigma this was the imaginary part j omega fine this is one thing that you need to keep in mind now the other thing if x of t is uh, absolutely integrable right if x of t is absolutely integrable which means the Fourier transform converges so the the j omega x's would be included in the roc of the laplace transform right you know this very well if x of t is absolutely integrable right so what would be the case then uh, the the fourier transform would converge right fourier transform would converge and this means if you calculate the Laplace transform of it, so the ROC of Laplace transform will include the J omega axis. Yes, you know this very well. Why? Because this is converging. Or anyway, in the opposite sense, if you say that this is including the J omega axis, the ROC, so the Fourier transform is existing for that signal similarly over here we would say that in the discrete time case if uh, the x of n is absolutely summable if x of n is absolutely summable so what do we have we have the discrete time Fourier transform would exist right and then if you see in the opposite case the if you have the z transform so the z transform ROC will include the unit circle right why because if x of n is absolutely simple so a discrete time Fourier transform is exists and discrete time Fourier transform is evaluated on a unit circle right so similarly in the opposite sense now again if you see the roc if you calculate the z transform so the roc of the z transform will include the unit circle and if it includes the unit circle, this means that the j the, that the that the, the the DTFT could be evaluated. So the signal is a bounded signal or system or or, or or a stable system. Is that fine? Is that fine till here? So we talked about ROC. What's ROC? Region of convergence. I'm not talking about it over here. 
See you in the next video where we, we see the ROC through an example. So we will understand it better again. So till the next video, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.